Exciting news for YouTubers, streamers, and content creators of all kind. DJI has released the second iteration of their popular wireless microphone system, and we just happen to have one here in the office, so I thought I'd take the next five minutes and tell you all about what's new with the DJI Mic 2. Okay, right off the bat, the Mic 2 comes with a much improved carrying case. Sometimes it's the little things that make the difference. Uh, way better organizational options compared to the drawstring bag provided with the Mic 1. You can fit the case in the side, you have room for the windscreens and any cables. The case itself, which is now made of metal, you still have the four battery status lights on the front. Um, and as you can tell, I'm struggling with the new push button latch, which provides some extra security when you're traveling with the Mic 2, and it still charges via USB-C. The transmitters themselves, a little bit shorter, but thicker in design, probably to accommodate for the new battery. More on that in a minute. But we've also seen some changes to the layout of the buttons and the LED lights. Previously, the record button was right next to the link button, and people were accidentally hitting it when going to hit record. So to prevent that from happening, the record button is now isolated on this side of the transmitter, and they've painted a nice red circle on there as well. The record light and the connection light were previously on the front shoulder and quite visible on camera. So with the Mic 2, they've moved them to the sides here for a more discreet appearance. They've also improved the magnet design. They're a little bit thicker now, so improved strength for when attaching uh, to something like a hoodie or the lapel color of a jacket, but uh, they've also nicely branded them, which is great because when you inevitably lose one on the ground, you'll think, what the heck is that? But at least now it says DJI, so you know it belongs to something. Easier to find. We've also seen an improvement in the windscreen. Uh, previously on the Mic 1, it was a sort of twist on scenario, but what they've done with the Mic 2 uh, now incorporates this sort of dummy 3.5 millimeter jack. It snaps into place ever so nicely uh, for better security, and now that windscreen is on there and you don't have to worry about it coming undone. A nice touch. The receiver itself also received an overhaul. Uh, you may notice the new physical control wheel, but it also actually has a slightly larger display. The physical control wheel will allow you to navigate through the menus and also has a push button feature to enter any sub-menus. We still have the same USB port, physical power button, and two 3.5 millimeter jacks, one for headphone monitoring out, and one for audio out to connect to your DSLR camera. You also may notice that the hot shoe mount is now incorporated into the design of the receiver rather than previously being a loose adapter. You're still offered the same three recording modes with the Mic 2, Mono, Mono with Safety Track, and Stereo Recording. For those of you who don't know, Mono with Safety Track will actually record a secondary track with 6 dB less gain applied as a safety backup. Great news for Lightning users. In our previous review, we found out that the Mic 1 did not support stereo recording for Lightning users. And this included the mono with safety track mode. However, we're happy to report that the Mic 2 has made the update and Lightning users can now take advantage of all three modes. We did see a small bump in battery life. The transmitters can now run for up to six hours. And with additional top-ups in the charging case, uh, you get a total of 18 hours of use. Okay, on to new tech. We have seen the addition of noise canceling technology to the Mic 2. In my tests that I performed in a busy city scenario, I found the noise canceling actually did quite a good job at suppressing things like the passing of traffic, um, cars splashing into puddles, weather related things. It didn't completely eliminate these sounds, but it definitely suppressed them enough to allow you to listen to my voice distraction free. The Mic 2 also now offers 32-bit float recording. And we've been hearing a lot about 32-bit float. It is something that's offered by the more expensive options like the Rode Wireless Pro. So let's touch on that for a second. 32-bit float allows you to record a wider dynamic range of levels. Let's say you're conducting an interview and your guest goes from loud yelling to quiet whispering. What you can do is transfer the 32-bit track from the transmitter into your DAW or video editing software, and that's where you'll find the uncompromised track. You'll be able to bring down any parts of the audio that we're clipping, and the opposite. You'll be able to bring up any quiet parts without adding extra noise. As far as alternatives, the Rode Wireless Pro is still the main competitor. Uh, has a lot of the same features like the charging case, 32-bit float, but one advantage to the Rode Wireless Pro is that they have 32 gigs of internal storage compared to the eight gigs of internal storage offered by the Mic 2. 
So if you are using 32-bit float quite a bit, it's gonna take up more room, you might wanna consider the Rode Wireless Pro. At 349, it's not exactly a cheap investment, but if you're serious about creating content and want something that's robust and convenient, then the DJI Mic 2 might be for you. Oh, just like that, it's been five minutes. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, I'm Dave Carr with Sound Guys, and happy listening.